Well, welcome to uh, In the Valley of Novelty. I see familiar faces, unfamiliar faces. Uh, we, these things are most interesting, at least to me, when they're directed by the agendas of whoever's present. I, can, I have a number of things on my mind, more than a weekend's worth of stuff. All of it is very familiar to me. I know what I think, mostly, most of the time. So uh, don't be afraid to interrupt, to ask questions. If you're not getting what you want, it's fine to take it another direction. Uh, the way I conceive of these things and how they've evolved over the years is originally my enthusiasm was for informing people about uh, the psychedelic experience, especially plants, and how that arose out of shamanism and how it uh, was evidence for Jungian models of the psyche and uh, uh, basically for me the, the psychedelic experience was the path to revelation. It actually worked on somebody who thought nothing would work and then uh, and uh, and that's still a large part of what gets talked about in these weekends, simply because uh, there's an endless crop of new people who are interested in using these uh, botanical materials for purposes of self-exploration and doing that safely, sanely, and in a, in a uh, fully aware manner involves coordinating a lot of detail, botanical, chemical, ethnographic, geographical, evolutionary, biological, pharmacological detail, which we can spend as much time on as the, as the group will, will tolerate. Uh, what I like to talk about and what I have very little competition in terms of talking about is the content of the psychedelic experience, which is very difficult to English or, or to bring into any other language, and which is not predictable or is confounding of the expectations of students of, uh, of mystical experience. And so that was sort of my core specialty if you will, was the ethnopharmacology of consciousness and the phenomenology of the states there derived. Uh, but after 25 or 30 years of doing this, it bleeds into all kinds of larger categories like what is art, what is human history, what is the religious impulse? What is the erotic impulse? What, are, what is mathematics? Uh, and then somehow these concerns, shamanic, oracular, ecstatic, always garner to themselves a prophetistic aura. What is the future? And uh, can it be known? And is it mundane? or is it transcendental, and on what scale, and on what schedule. Uh, <clears throat> so all of these things are interesting to me. Uh, my personal history, if it matters, uh, I grew up uh, in a very middle class family in a very small town on the western slopes of Colorado which is about as white bread culture as you can uh, possibly achieve, uh, was a very stable environment to be brought up in. It was the 50s. It was all, uh, you know, tube furniture and bad television. And, uh, but the ground I happened to be fortunate enough to walk around on uh, had clamshells 150 million years old scattered through it, dinosaur bones, extinct fishes. 
And I, as a kid, I was a loner, and I spent a lot of time in these dry arroyos and uh, uh, washes where these fossils and stuff could be found. And then, you know, people informed me of the age of these things. And I can remember when I found out that a million years is a thousand years, a thousand times. It was like I got it. I mean, it was the largest thing I could get at that stage of my conceptualizing reality. But then I suddenly, the, the, the reality of the size and scale of nature s- snapped into focus for me. And I've been thinking about this recently because one of the things you'll find out about me if we get to know each other is that I have a a skeptical and cranky side and I'm forever puzzled by why people believe some of the seeming to me dumb things that they choose to believe and and I spend a lot of time thinking about what is a dumb thing to believe and who, uh, you know how do you judge in a shrilly competing ideological marketplace the various claims, counterclaims, nostrums, ideologies, therapies, insights, revelations that are being uh, being peddled, and uh, and so my my uh, intellectual development, if you want to put it like that, was a sort of uh, scientific in the sense that it was always about looking at phenomena, testing it, trying to define its limits. The strange thing that happened to me, because I guess I eventually became involved with psychedelics, was this method of testing, demanding proof, never taking anything for granted. Normally what that does is it it deflates reality. It flattens it. It makes it industrial and existential and post-romantic and horrifying. But in my case, it didn't because psychedelics are actually a kind of uh, miraculous reality that can stand the test of objective examination. I mean, in other words, there's nothing woo-woo about it. It has to do with perturbing states of brain chemistry and standing back and observing the effects uh, they're wrought thereby. And it's extremely dependable. And from a medical point of view, it's extremely safe and non-invasive. I mean, one of the paradoxes of pharmacology is that the substances which most dramatically affect the mind do so at tiny doses and with very little sequela. This is extraordinary. I mean, it's almost as though the mind in this case is a phenomenon very different from the body where, you know, to achieve major effects in the body often uh, massively in Invasive procedures or large doses of invasive chemicals have to be used. Someone once said to me, referring to LSD, that if you wanted a picture at the molecular level of the power of LSD, imagine an ant that can rip the Empire State Building apart in 30 minutes. One ant in terms of the scales and the sizes of what's going on, that's a reasonable analogy to the power of LSD. So I I explored all kinds of fringe areas when I was a kid, uh, magic and telepathy and Ouija boards and uh, various invocations, some of which interrupted my career as an altar boy. Uh, couldn't have it both ways, it turned out. 